Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing the art of hooking. This is like pushing judo to a whole new dimension, I would say. It's the things that are really brutal and hardcore. However, I do like it. Of course, it's very efficient. It's very tough. But for me, as a judoka who is very much invested in safety, this is you know, just a little too much. And... Uh, when it comes to self-defense, I don't know how much you can do of this because, of course, there are legal ramifications of what you do. But uh, when it comes to judo, of course, in the past, we all knew that they had a lot of very strong things that were later removed, like spine locks, these uh, torsions, etc. But uh, in catch and hooking, you're going to see that um, there are th some things that they would just never fly off in judo. So... First, through common points, let's talk about the Ude Garami. This is a classic in Judo. Anyone who first learns how to submit, they will try to go for this one, a white belt in Jiu-Jitsu. In Judo, you see this. So the principle is you have the shoulder and the palm facing upward. They're both on the ground. And what you do is through your forearm, you lift the elbow up putting pressure on the shoulder so it can be through this way where the palm is up or the palm is down which is a reversed ude garami people call it kimura after the judoka but there are also uh, a ways to do it when it is uh, a straight line or a straight arm i will see it in a little bit so as you can see here this is the different angle i was talking the mechanics are still the same you lift the elbow up putting immense pressure on the shoulder so of course you can also target the elbow doing this not only the shoulder when they're fighting you they might stretch out their arm to avoid the submission but now you have a new target which is the elbow you apply the same mechanics by lifting your elbow up but the pressure is now on the elbow. Now, let's look, take a look at Tony Cecchini's uh, American Catch tutorial where he first starts by actually rotating the palm downwards uh, where in Judo it is facing upwards and that alone will put immense pressure on the shoulder even before you even start putting pressure uh, for the submission that alone will probably get you a tap if someone has very stiff narrow shoulders so here you can see that uh, they can even remove the option to tap it's just one motion one quick motion it doesn't even require a lot of strength it can rip out everything and you'll see it in a second so first thing he does which really uh, kicks things into overdrive is to rotate the palm downward and from here he explained the classical way of finishing it which is of course lifting the elbow up and bringing it close to you and this is attacking the shoulders of course now we all know this but he's just showing you this very classical way however hooking is a completely different game where you just grip and rip uh, snap no tap i'm sure you've ho heard these expressions before so now here he explains how you just remove it all together it's kind of like switching from side control into a scarf hold body wise you see how he rotates his hips changes the position of his legs but in doing so here without uh, an uke you can see that it will completely remove the arm and just completely shatters the shoulder. So again, these are things that cannot be discussed in Judo. This is a little bit of an overkill, I would say. Now, the next one is, of course, you have cast slicers and uh, leg entanglements uh, in catch. Of course, in Judo, that used to be the case 100 years ago. But here you see this uh, leg entanglement. This is a variation of Ashi Garami as well because... By every sense of the word, it's a leg entanglement where you spread out the legs of your uh, opponent and attack the hips and also the crotch. So, But he uses this entanglement 
in order to get into an arm lock. Usually when we're on top in judo, either we wait for the pin to expire or we come up and collect the arm for an arm lock. But here he says that in order to collect that, he should completely not only immobilize him, but put him in a very dangerous situation. So the first thing he does is with the entangled leg, he kicks it up. That alone just cripples the hips. And from there, he pushes the head sideways towards the leg, which puts immense pressure on the spine. Again, not a judo friendly move. I don't know about jujitsu, but here he says from there, he can isolate the arm and go for the arm bar. So you see the the differences between how to get to things and also uh, hooking how you leave sometimes no room to tap and just completely shatter everything next one is the scarf hold the scarf hold is a judo classic um, many jujitsu black belts and catch wrestlers say that in judo when you get to the scarf hold it's the end but in jujitsu sometimes it's just where you begin so as you saw, there are uh, arm locks from this position. Uh, if there is no pin or the rule of the pin doesn't exist. Um, however, in catch here or hooking, he takes it up a notch and actually attacks the forearm. Usually you see joint locks, either you attack the shoulder or the elbow, depending on the position of the arm. If it's stretched out, that's the elbow. But here he actually tries to shatter the forearm bone and it's not difficult to do if you see uh, people trying to do buggy chokes and uh, things in MMA they actually end up breaking their own forearm and so from this position with this amount of pressure and leverage it's not that difficult to do so uh, and of course there are the classical things that you see in judo where you kind of do the arm entanglement but with your legs so this is ashi gatame or uh, hisagatame depending on how the leg is used and here you see that he's saying the shoulder should not be on the ground never and he applies the makura concept makura is a pillow so here it's uh, where you grab your own thigh it actually uh, lifts the shoulder up which makes it very difficult for them to turn towards you or escape and from there the leverage is very high and also the shoulder is in a very bad position so any type of pressure can easily finish the fight so as you can see it's a little bit of an overdrive or an overkill if you depending on how you see it from what judo uh, usually does and also the way he speaks uh, tony he talks about i'm gonna break his arm uh, you, uh, just like a boxer says i'm gonna knock him out he doesn't talk specifically about strategies yes he's very technical but he has this approach of just finishing things and uh, something like judo again it's invested in uh, education and uh, courtesy and of course safety these things are somewhat I don't want to say wild to me but because I know the extent of the submissions but uh, it seems uh, they are being taken for their martial value and really taken to somewhat of an extreme uh, in the competitive world you know breaking someone like that shattering them leaving no room for tap it's sometimes it's 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 a little too much for me and i'm sure a lot of people would agree especially the the ude garami and how he just rotates and finishes it it's uh in my opinion there's really no need just pressure everything isolate everything and get a tap progressively competition keep it progressive but tighten it and if they want don't want to tap that's on them but at least you should leave an option. So if you have anything to add, let me know. This was Shadi. Thank you for listening.